Hidden billionaires. The whole idea really doesn't make sense. How do you have that much money and stay off the Forbes lists, out of the society pages, and under the radar altogether? Well, we have proved that it's possible. Bloomberg Markets went looking for these reticent rich. First, we found them. And then, perhaps more amazingly, we persuaded some of them to step out of the shadows. The story is in this month's issue, and the writer is here with us today. Matthew Miller. Matt, what prompted you to go looking for these people in the first place? Well, you have to remember that, that billionaires effectively control the world's economy. They control huge swaths of uh, how we eat, how we listen to music. You look at the billionaire news today, Google, Apple. These are Steve Jobs versus Larry, Br uh, Larry Page and Sergey Brin. I mean, these are huge titans. And hidden wealth, these people play as much a role in the economy as the people that we already know about. And so what we wanted to do is go find people that were influencing things either in emerging markets or really in the modern economies. So it goes without saying, we have no idea who they are. Why don't right. you introduce us to some of them? Well, the first guy we found is actually our cover story. His name is Carlos Rodriguez Pastor. Fascinating guy. This is a guy who worked on Wall Street. His father had just acquired a bank about 10 years ago, he, or 15 years ago. He decided to go and run it with his dad. His father quickly passed away, and he was basically able to ride this huge tide of uh, people coming out of poverty into the lower middle class in Peru. And you see this all across the emerging economies. And so he started what essentially is a huge retail bank. And then he was able to go out and diversify into uh, supermarkets, into uh, hospitals, or excuse me, not hospitals, into hotels, into retail establishments. So this guy was basically able to build this huge thing, own it all, because billionaires need to own everything, and tap into a huge market, able to build a $3 billion fortune as a result. So of that. is that one of the themes that you found, or at least the consistencies, that many of these right. people are in other countries, that they're, the, the chances of, of not knowing who they are are that much greater if they're not inside the United States? Well, if they're not inside the United States, and really, if they're in emerging economies, there's more likely that they're going to become billionaires in the next, you know, in the past couple of years. And maybe that's accumulating right. wealth that's that much right. faster. That's right. That's right. So you're going to see if, if they're able to ride this huge wave of, of people coming out of poverty and into the lower middle class, you have a huge audience and a huge customer base to go after. And so what you really need is a rich idea that can go and touch as many people as possible. All right. Let's talk about who's next on the list. Okay. Alain Taravella. Now, this is a French uh, real estate mogul, and he was basically able to go off and build real retail centers at a time when uh, French retail centers weren't that popular. And so he had some really hard times in 2008 during the French uh, real estate slump, as we all did. And he was basically able to stave off all kinds of problems. He was able to stave off all kinds of debt. He is striking and, quite a pose. Yeah. Pretty cool guy, based in Paris, but basically owns retail centers all throughout France. And he was basically able to build essentially a $1.1 billion fortune by basically getting through the recession and the horrible real estate slump that Europe had without totally defaulting. Matt, I know there are many more people on the list, but we have about 45 seconds to go, so give us a third. Sure. Rubens Benin. Now, this is a guy, again, who was able to ride the tide in the emerging markets. He's Brazilian. He's a real estate mogul. Most real estate moguls in Brazil, what they do is they go after the wealthy. He went after what he calls the bricklayers and the maids of the country. You have large swaths of people who are coming into a little bit of disposable income. He's able to provide loans to them, low interest loans, and he's able to build houses for them and house essentially what is the lower middle class in Brazil. Matt, thanks so much for coming and showing us who some of these hidden billionaires are.